yelling myself hoarse on this radio every day. It's just the weather dumps on us frequently here. And maybe my transmission doesn't get through. I don't know. I can't understand one word of what you say, Willard. It's all going swell, sir. <laughs> This place is a busy history. Hello? Hello? What? What do you want from me now? Nothing that taxing. Are you all right? Well, if you'd all stop, I might be just fine. Just a hundred percent. Just go! If you'd all stop, who are you talking about? All you, hundreds of you, talking and chattering and breaking my brain up. Hmm. Well, I'm not quite sure where you're coming from. But I just want to know about the Infada artifact. In the temple up there. <laughs> voodoo magic and all, huh? I don't touch the stuff myself. It's not voodoo. Look, is there anyone else here with you? Yeah, Randy and Rory. <laughs> Randy and Rory? Where? What are you all doing here? Well, they're staying put in that temple. I told them not to. I warned them first. Not doing much now, I doubt, under half a ton of mudslide. Me. I'm leaving. Next bus out. This jungle is rooted enough rot into me. I'd offer the same advice to you, but you don't seem like the type to take it. To care if I said you're gonna die in there. <laughs> yeah. Die. I don't want to be misrepresented by that retarded researcher you've just been with. Uh, Lara. I'm Dr. Willard. I'd come to converse with Tony myself, but I saw you were doing a rather more creditable job, I think. Indeed, I'm inspired. I'd like to offer you other work. What? Shoot the breeze with some of your other boys? No thanks. Fortunately, they were the only lab rats we let loose into the field. No. My request is for three other artifacts like this. The Infada tribe only had one artifact of this type. It's unique. 
Anyway, what would your interest in it be? I'll show you. It's not from India, rather an island near Antarctica. It is, in fact, meteorite rock that has been fashioned and used by Polynesians, who were once settled there many, many years ago. See that? That's unique, an unknown material. So how did it end up here? Formed from the planets, sculpted by Polynesians, distributed by goons. Our excavations and investigations have led us to this, a sailor's diary from Charles Darwin's expedition on the HMS Beagle. August 14th, 1834. This voyage is getting too boring for me to go on with this journal. Me adventures at sea are an embarrassment. The only tales I'll have to tell are hours of bird watching, picking and pressing flowers, following them blasphemous ideas of the governor, Darwin. But this don't even concern me now. I just want food. Something more than vegetable broth in me. Today we five have made a pact. The only sampling we're going to be doing is for meat. Pure, solid, blood-rich meat. The snow's run out. The tracks have gone. Just keep going. We're on its trail. There's only four. None for you. Nobody better say nothing about this to the governor, else we'll be back having to hunt down that creature for his samples. Paul fell down a crevasse, okay? Okay, Stephen. Amen. Stephen was to be the only survivor of the four. When he arrived back in London, he superstitiously sold off his artifact, having seen his pals murdered or killed with theirs. One here in India, one in the South Pacific and one in Nevada. The places where I'd like you to go. Sounds good to me. You crazy geek freak. What kind of stunt is that to pull? Let's take her in. <laughs> she don't look much like one of them. Maybe she's an eco-terrorist or something. And they wear hot pants, huh?
Okay, see ya. For. What? You heard me. I didn't. Honest. What did you say? I said, who employs you? Ah! Miss Sophia Lee! <laughs> Who's she? What does she do? I don't know. Really, I don't. I just shoot people for her. A commendable work ethic, I guess. <sighs> yeah. I put my hours into it. As my father did and his father did her for. Well, how old is this, Miss Lee? I don't know. Late 20s? Early 30s? Right. Yeah. For some people, like yourself, we get a special bonus. I'm flattered. I mean, I could even be retiring from you. Then you might like to mind. <laughs> the bell. <laughs> Happy retirement. So, you must be after Miss Lee then. Business, not pleasure. Though obviously not for revenge, man. You've hardly got the face for that. And you have? <laughs> How moronic a question is that, eh? I don't even have a face, man. I came down here looking for work. And what do I get, eh? But Miss Lee's cosmetic company and her lab assistant job. No experience necessary. Good wage. Accommodation with it. Aye. Locked in a flotation tank for days on end, in some fetid syrup. And when we come out, cos lots of us applied like, no face or flesh, man. And a bootin' doing the waste disposal shoot here. Presumed deed. Some kind of failed experiment, then? Oh, ta, very much. But I, and for added insult, when I tried to take my own life, I found it just didn't work. You mean Sophia's testing some sort of immortality power? Along with her own brand of facelift. Why, aye, man. Everlasting beauty. She's obviously not fully worked it out yet, but she takes the best results for herself. See, I don't care what your business with her is. You can't be any more shiftless than what she is. So I'm going to go out of my way to help you. That is, after you've done something for us here, like. Very generous of you. What do you want? A bottle of that mummy preservation stuff from the Natural History Museum. Embalming fluid. Aye, for rotten flesh you can't whack it, man. The museum's pretty interesting, I'm told. You'll like it. So why don't you go yourself? One of them Egyptian lassies there is a bit pissed off, like, that uh, she didn't get immortality the way she wanted it. And seeing as we've done better than her in that department, I didn't care to imagine what curse we could get given any worse than what we've got already, like. You'll be fine, though, pet. You die easily. Thanks. Ah, Miss Croft. I take it you're ready to sign on. To what? Well, my books. You see, with your lifestyle, you'd be the perfect campaign for my products. But just think, you wouldn't be needing those unsightly weapons anymore. No, but I'll probably have an unsightly face, judging by your past experiments. My what? Oh yes, they're all still alive. Very much so, in fact. All I want is the artifact. <laughs> right. In your next life. We'll see. Not interrupting, am I? Not bleeding, are you? Not about to use this place as a dunny. 
No, and no. Good. Good. Just don't want any fly-carrying visitors in here. Right. I understand. What happened? Woke up in the jungle with one of those little blokes snacking on my leg, didn't I? A tribesman? It isn't usual for them to eat right off the bone like that. Well, it was dark and I, I never got the bugger, so I can't be sure. Something spooky is in that jungle. Our air carrier crashed up in the mountains. Every night some of my men would vanish without trace. Others fled in fear. Then this happened. And I brought the men down to shore for safety. Only for us all to be captured by this greedy mob. Some sort of sacrifice to their god who lives up in the hills. Though it seems I've not been invited to the barbie. Maybe you're the dessert. Ripe flesh can be a bit of a delicacy around here. For real? Listen, we'd better get you out of here. Do you know how the tribe cross the swamp down there? Which stones they tread on? Yeah, but, uh, I'm staying put. With this wound, I'd be like a fill-up station to every diseased bug in the bush. I'd rather be the main course of the real feast. Hey, if you see any of my men alive in there, direct them to the North Shore, will you? Away from here. Of course. You, me fast in this day. You make plenty good flesh pot. You forget. I might be quite hungry myself. Famished, actually. Uh. Why did your ancestors flee from Antarctica so suddenly? Oh. Kuma, Kuma, bad place. Plenty flesh. But for the price of evil, mutilation, the sixth leader, Mauki, were born without a face. Terrible storms. Men afraid, run! Set curse of Maoki on the land. No one good enough. But you still worship it? White fella later come here with magic Kuma Kuma stone. In a day, we celebrate the death of him, the Feast of Smile. One of Darwin's sailors, poor fool. Where's the stone now? <laughs> He lucky fella that kill you. A plenty merry like you. I'll be sure to point that out to him. This is Hamlet's to base. Come in, base. Come in, base. Dead air, man. Gotta get down. This is too much. Hold on back there. at home. I, I won't be a minute. At home? I've just met a man who may as well have been Brundlefly. Fascinating, isn't it? He was your own employee. He was a molecular biologist. He'd have been intrigued with himself. Thanks to this material, his Hox genes were multiplied. Do that, and the complexities of our bodies increase beyond our comprehension. But this is just the fringe of its possibilities we're seeing here. My pal's exposure came from the material impregnated into the meteorite crater. The real capacities lie in its core, which these artefacts you're so attached to will let me access. But you've no control over this. This is not just about avidly spawning mutants. It's an entirely natural acceleration of evolution, a real live laboratory of spurred on life. Not everyone here wants to be guinea pigs, multi-appendaged or not. Well, 
That's unfortunate. It's been hit and miss here for too long. Now the timing's spot on. I can't leave it. The Polynesians fled in their ignorance. Darwin's half-wit sail is the same, ironically making Darwin himself miss this angle on evolution. But now, I'm here. I have the access, the knowledge, the artifacts. Yes, but you bumped into me in India and sent me to find them for you, bringing me here. Listen to this gibberish. Your perception of good timing is bad. I don't know about that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 